Cattle Parish DA James Stewart joins us for a little bit. Mr. James, welcome back to, uh, I almost said welcome back to DA. Welcome back to Keel. Thank you for taking time for us. Oh, thank you all for having me this morning. So I would imagine, like like the DA's office doesn't have anything else to do, now you, 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 you're saddled with the burden of enforcing, well, I guess you kind of have been all along. Oh, yeah. Student truancy. But as we move into this new era of distance learning, tell us about the conversation uh, conversations you've had with with uh, Superintendent Gorey about how you're going to handle this on his behalf. Well, I mean, we've always been there for support enforcement if we necessary. The truancy program that's funded by Willis Knight has come in and really done a great job of making sure that we can get all our kids in school, keep them off the street, which really helps all of us in the long run. Uh, we're in a new normal. And the conversations I've had with uh, Superintendent uh, Gorey is compulsory uh, attendance is still there. Parents have three options. They have actual, hybrid, or virtual uh, uh, learning. But they got to choose one, and they have to do one. And so that's what we're left, supporting the parents who have an issue with any one of them to make sure that their kids are in the educational process. At what point do you, does your office step in, Judge? It, it, it doesn't change because what happens is we get the referrals from, from the school board saying these kids have uh, X number of unexcused absences. The truancy center reaches out, tries to resolve whatever issues. Uh, they can't resolve those issues. They're referred to us, and we still have another process that we use to try to get the, uh, the parents involved <clears throat> before we actually will file something in June and do it court for improper supervision. Mr. James, since you have been DA your election a few years ago, a couple of years ago, how many truancy cases have you actually had? What's the penalty for that, the strictest penalty that has been meted out? And because of distance learning and this hybrid school thing, do you, uh, do you anticipate that there will be more of those? Well, Fortunately, the numbers have dropped dramatically. It was almost like 85 to 90 percent drop in referrals uh, to juvenile court. And we've actually been able to manage that to the point that we have not had to bring a parent in front of a judge for potential of six months and a substantial fine. So fortunately, the, the truancy program works. Intervention works. To keep people out of the system it just it takes a lot of effort to deal with a lot of the issues we can anticipate we're going to have more referrals and we're going to have different types of issues but uh kelly todd and the truancy center or they've been working virtually all summer with kids they're ready to, to address any problem that comes up all we need is a commitment from the parents to want to do it and, and we can get it done okay let me ask you this i i had two sons and I'd have to get up and go to work. If I left them home, they were 16 months apart. They're 13 and 14. They're crafty at that age. If they're supposed to be at home doing virtual learning, they might find a way to log on somehow and not do their work and then be riding the streets. Is there something that's going to be done about teens that we see out in the streets when they really should be at home on the computer in school? Well, that that's a... Another issue in terms of working with uh, SPD, the sheriff, the marshal's office, and addressing when kids are out and identifying a, a particular issue. Uh, my understanding of the process is going to be very difficult for a kid to just log in and then walk away from the computer virtually because the teacher is going to know when they're not in front of the computer. The technology center will be able to do it, and they'll be doing some canvassing and checking behind any suspicious activity so we can identify that it, it's a it, it's going to be a more involved process i'm not about to tell you it's going to be perfect but i think the effort is going to be there you know i watched last night the, the sec roll out its schedule but the big 10 said they can't play mm -hmm. the sec is going to try to play okay but everything's fluid it changes from day to day and this is nothing different from that everything involving covid the courthouse the hospitals, the grocery stores, everything's fluid. It's, it's change, and it's a new normal, and I, we can't guarantee it's going to be perfect. After three unexcused absences, there'll be a parent-teacher conference, I understand. 
If it continues, then it rises to the level of the truancy center would get involved. Can parents actually be fined, be pulled into court if they cannot get their student to log on and attend virtual school? Uh, yes. Uh, ultimately, you can be because attendance is compulsory, okay? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what type of attendance it is. Ultimately, you could be brought in front of a court and we would have to prove that you hadn't done certain things. But ultimately, we could get there. I I'm just saying, uh, based on prior work, I don't expect us to get there uh, uh, very often. And number two, I just think the effort is going to be there to make sure uh, that we don't have that particular problem. Judge, you've been doing this for a while, from the bench and now in the DA's office. With with virtual school, with hybrid school, are you concerned, based on your experience, what you know, are you concerned about not only, not only the short-term crime rate for Caddo Parish, but I, I would suspect for the kids themselves who might get into trouble because school's not in session, fair? Yeah, I mean... Everybody's concerned. I mean, they're concerned in New Orleans. They're concerned in Baton Rouge. They're concerned all across the country. You know, we have some schools that have that Everybody's concerned now with the rise in crime because of the pandemic. But it's something we have to go through, and we, we're working on means to try to alleviate it. Having kids back in school in some form uh, will help with the issue. 